Hey my friends, Kirby here of KirbyAnderson.com. Hey, you're probably really familiar with the old phrase, work smarter, not harder, right? We get that. I mean, that's something that we all aspire towards. And yet the problem is we're all prone to the tendency of doing just the opposite, and that is to work harder. And that's why I want to talk with you today about how to make time to sharpen the ax, how to stay sharp, work less, and accomplish more. That's got a good ring to it, doesn't it? You know, you may be familiar with the phrase, sharpen the saw. Stephen Covey, who wrote his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, made this famous back in 1989. But Stephen didn't make that principle up. He is just repeating what the Bible has talked about for years. In fact, all the way back in the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10, it says this, If the ax is dull and he does not sharpen its edge, then he must exert more strength, which means, of course, he's going to have to work harder. Wisdom, though, has the advantage of giving success, and that's what I want to talk with you about here today, is the success that comes when you learn how to take time to sharpen the saw. Now, this verse very simply tells us what we all know too well is that we just get tired just with the normal day in and day out rhythm of life. So the basic lesson here is this, if that we will just stop the work, whatever our work is, long enough to resharpen the ax, or in Stephen Covey's metaphor, to sharpen the saw, we're going to be able to accomplish a whole lot more with a whole lot less effort. And again, that's very easy to understand, but it's not always that easy to do, is it? No, you know it. You have proved it yourself. I know that I have. It is so much easier to saw or to chop when the tool is sharpened. I mean, Woodworking 101 tells us that. But we all tend to just saw or chop harder as that tool dulls. That's what we do. We're just going to get in here. And even though it just seems like it's not getting anywhere, I'm just going to just go a little bit harder and saw just a little bit faster. But it's better just to take some time and to stop to sharpen it, even though that seems to be uh, something that's going to slow us down. But if you don't take time to sharpen the tools of your trade, you're just going to work harder and you're going to have a lot less to show for it. So what are the tools of your trade? Well, obviously they're going to vary between all of us, but in general we can say this. Number one, it's your skills. It's like Napoleon Dynamite. Got to have some skills. What are your skills? Everybody has tools of the trade, has, a, has a, a, a knowledge base or certain skills that you have to keep proficient. And the way that you do that is either just through individual study, maybe it's going to seminars, maybe it's taking continuing education classes. But continually learning and staying proficient is what's going to make your work easier and more productive. And so you need to keep investing in your own skills on a regular basis. Number two, another major tool is your body. I mean, think about it. Everything that we do involves this earth suit of ours. And so the main admonition I have for you today is take care of yourself. Take care of this physical body. That means you're going to have to get enough rest. You're going to have to have the proper nutrition. You're going to have to exercise you got to keep yourself at your best. And I know that there are times that when I am not rested, I feel like I'm just swimming through mud. True confessions here, I was supposed to have shot this video yesterday, but I woke up in a funk. I didn't get a good night's sleep. And I just felt like, man, I could push in there and do it just as an act of will and to show some discipline. But I have known from, from past experience that even though I do that, chances are it's going to take me two to three times longer, and it probably isn't going to be worth even uh, posting out there, and I'm going to be frustrated. So I just decided to rearrange my schedule, get a good night's rest. Man, I feel so much better today. You can't spend and work 12 hours a day just sitting at a desk and living on a diet of, of coffee and donuts and Hot Pockets and expect to be at your absolute best and to, and to last for the long haul. You're gonna to have to take care of your body. And number three, another important tool is just your frame of mind. 
man, this is so important as well. Even if you don't have a lot of physical labor, you are expending a lot of mental and emotional energy every day. And if you don't keep that, that attitude and your mind recharged, it is so easy to get irritable and pessimistic and discouraged. And so you're going to have to learn how to relax on a regular basis and find some kind of recreation that recharges you on a regular basis as well. Now, here's a few basics to keep in mind that will help you to stay sharp. Number one, focus on what you're really good at. This is just a basic principle here, is to figure out the tasks and the activities that you really like, that you're good at, that's making the biggest difference in your life and most importantly in other people's lives. And after you do it, you actually feel energized. Man, there are so many things that I can think of like that, that even though that I work really hard at doing, let's just say like hosting an event, I love to put on big events, whether that was in the church or in the community. I love that kind of stuff. It's a lot of work. And I can go at the end of the day and just be physically exhausted, but I feel like, man, I'm energized right now. I could just keep on doing this. And obviously you can't. But you understand what I'm saying. Some of my friends call this an up arrow. It's something that energizes you, revitalizes you. Find those things and focus on those. Number two, minimize what you dread doing. Now, we all have to do some things that we really don't enjoy. But it's always good to ask yourself, is there somebody else in your circle of influence who is actually energized by that same activity? Maybe it's a coworker, maybe it's a family member, and the very thing that is a down arrow for you that drains you is actually something that energizes them. Is it possible that you can enlist their help and draw them in? Maybe even have to hire somebody. If you can do that, it's probably worth it to do it. Now, we all have to do some of the things that we don't like. We can't stop doing all of those things that we don't enjoy. But I just want to encourage you to take a little bit of time to continually ask yourself, is there a better way? And could you enlist the help of others? And number three is just simply schedule times to recharge. And this, my friend, is the biggie. You're going to have to schedule out times every single week to do something that recharges you, to take an hour or two hours of something that is going to build you back up again. If you don't do it, it's not going to happen. And let me tell you, you need this. In all of the guys that I coach, this is one of the big rocks that I focus on because it is one of those things that just gets kicked down the road week after week after week. You got to find something that you enjoy. You know, just ask yourself, if you had an hour or two today to do some completely discretionary time that was really going to build you up, what would that be? Maybe it's reading. Maybe it's taking a class. I mean, I'm a lifelong learner. If I got two hours and I can just do anything, I'm going to explore something on the internet. I'm going to listen to a TED talk. I'm going to learn something about an area that I know nothing about just for the sake of learning because it builds me up. Maybe it's just taking a walk or a long bath or finding a hobby that you really enjoy. And most importantly, You need to find times with God in a way that is going to relate to you and that energizes you spiritually. Shouldn't be of any surprise, Jesus was a master of this. But it's kind of ironic. Here he is, the Son of God. You'd think he would have this unlimited uh, amount of energy. And what was so common is at the times when he is at the height of his ministry and there's lots of people around, his disciples couldn't find him. Why? Because he's on the backside of a mountain someplace early in the morning, getting spiritually recharged, hanging out with his heavenly Father. And my point to you today is this, if Jesus needed to do that, how much more do you or I? So, again, you cannot sharpen the axe, so to speak, without stopping the work for a while. And I know the temptation is, I just got to keep going, I just got to get this done. But if you will take the time, when you resume, you're actually going to accomplish more with less effort, and it's probably going to be done even better. Not only that, when you keep your axe sharpened, you're going to find out 
that not only is it better for you, but it's better for everybody else that you engage with as well. Your family, your friends, your coworkers. When I was pastoring for years, I would take regular retreats, quarterly, and then a large annual retreat at the end of the year. My congregation got to the place where they understood that this is going to be a really good thing because I always came back better and so will you. And it doesn't have to be for a day, but there's going to have to be those times that you come up for air to sharpen the ax. So take the time. Make the time. You can't afford to not stay sharp. So I hope that was helpful to you today. And if you'd like to get other videos like this and have them delivered straight to your email inbox, I'll do that for you if you just go to kirbyanderson.com and sign up for my email newsletter. But I want to encourage you today to take the time, actually just create some time to keep yourself sharpened. You deserve it. Your family deserves it. Those closest to you deserve your very best. And it's all part of living better, loving more, and leaving the legacy that you desire. I hope you have a good week, my friend. Stay on target.